Hi there, and welcome to the Curious Collective podcast, conversations designed for the conscious community to bring awareness to those holistic practices that help us live our best life. So tap into the wisdom and knowledge of our guests to heal, transform, and live as your true soulful self. Hey there, listeners, and welcome back to the Curious Collective. Today with us, we have the amazing Nikhil from Self Seeker. So this is a funny little story before I introduce you, uh, Nick, just to explain how it is that we came into each other's lives. So last week, um, a beautiful friend of mine, Katie, contacted me and she's like, hey, have you seen this event? My mate Nick's running it on Sunday. You should go along. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know about this. It's only 20 minutes from my house. Introduce us. So we were introduced that day. Feel like we've known each other forever. And here he is on the podcast the day after the amazing event, which we will talk into soon. So welcome, Nick, to the Curious Collective. Thank you very much, Katie. Such a pleasure to be here and connecting with all of you magical people out there. Um, yeah, looking forward to a chat. Yes, absolutely. So I think first and foremost, before we get into all the myriad of amazing magic that you give to this world, we had an event yesterday, or you did, I'll say we, because I was like... We, we it. did, we did. Uh, and it was called the Self Seeker Festival and it was run at Cooper Darbin uh, Wilderness, which is just out the back of my place at, at, this, at Mount Samson. And can you tell us all the listeners what this event was and where the inspiration come from came from and also like what you're feeling today, like post-event? Sure, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so I've created... Uh, I call it an identity, um, self-seeker. It's like someone who is constantly seeking and finding themselves through the things they do, through the things they experience. As we do more things, as we meet more people, we uncover new aspects of ourselves. We find ourselves. We lose ourselves, and then we find ourselves again. Mm. So I like to think of myself as a person going on a journey and I want to connect with other people who are maybe experiencing the same thing maybe they are finding themselves so the self-seeker festival is a place a time a location where people can connect and we are like-minded we are like-hearted and have the same vision we want to improve the world we want to improve the environment but we're going to start with the community we're going to start with looking at ourselves so i've invited people who get us to move and shake and dance and breathe and sing and think in new ways that helps us look at ourselves from different angles and sometimes get into uncomfortable positions <laughs> you know yesterday we spoke gibberish for 15 minutes that was one of the meditations we had that was challenging was... <laughs> <laughs> it can be challenging to come up with nonsense as well you know because we're always trying to be right and accurate and politically correct all the time gibberish meditation puts all of that to rest and it was the first time i did it so uh, that was a lot of fun. We had um, a, a beautiful singer, is a singing a teacher come up from Sunshine Coast, Julia, and all of us sang our hearts out and we rocked. We oh, rocked we were place. so good. Oh, <laughs> it was so good. It, it felt really good to just express and be guided by someone to know, hey, even if you think, you know, you've got this story that you, you can't sing, like, we were amazing. There was no one who couldn't sing. Mm. I could hear every voice. It was, it might have been the smallest peep of a voice, but it, it was there. It was then just a matter of confidence on how loud you want to be. But we kept moving around in circles, mingling, swinging, like changing the crowd we were with. So all of that helped. We, of course, started a day with a little Bollywood dancing and who would say no to that? Shaking I was away. actually Bollywooding in the uh, kitchen with my children this morning. Uh -huh. I, I had so much fun yesterday. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad you made it on time. So you didn't miss out on the Bollywood dancing with, with Kajal. Yeah, she's amazing. Then she uh, gave us a talk on uh, healing without dependencies, which makes a lot of sense. 
in this day and age. A lot of knowledge um, there from one of the speakers and, and she was speaking into the root cause of things and really coming back to the self for healing and just some really powerful words and an amazing woman. Sorry. So bringing all these people together, how did you source and find who you wanted there? Did you did you sort of reach out to those that you'd seen in your vision to bring together for this event? A few of the people I've already interacted with, I've had sessions with, and I know what magic they're capable of creating. Not just magic, but when you listen to them speak, you, you are looking at them in amazement and wonder that they hold so much information and knowledge. People like Lisa Bruff with biomagnetism, Naomi Kennedy with ancestral healing. Now, it was just fantastic. So some of the people I knew I wanted straight away. So as soon as the idea formed in my head, the same day I sent a message and said, this is what I plan to do. Would you like to be in? And the right ones came in. So it was easy. But I've already started making a list of people I want for my next event. And I've got so many beautiful connections. They're all waiting for a platform to be, to be heard. And that's what I'm trying to create. Yeah. I also really loved um, the, that events like this is, is the coming together of the people and the conversations in between the sessions. And, you know, we all shared this beautiful meal together, you know, um, gluten-free, delicious, wholesome food. And just sitting in the sun with these amazing conscious humans and, and sharing a meal together just is so filling. <laughs> My cup was like overflowing. <laughs> that was the idea. Get people to fill their own cups in their own time. So uh, it was a very relaxed atmosphere. And Kupidaban Wilderness does that to you. It's built on a slope. And you hear the kukwaras. So easy to just zone out. Yeah, absolutely. What upside exists? What a beautiful location you chose. The yeah. land really held what was going on. Absolutely. So, share with us uh, beyond your events that you're running. Um, what is it that you do in this world, and what makes your heart sing? Thank you for that question. It's interesting because uh, depending on the time of day, I'll give you a different answer. <laughs> Right now, sitting here, I feel I want more warmth and I'm receiving warmth from the sun, but I want to create warmth for other human beings through connection, through friendship. So I really want to build a community and this is the starting point. Mm. I have always been able to bring people together for projects that I'm involved in. I make movies, I'm a filmmaker. I made three short films so far. They're all available on my channel to watch on YouTube. Uh, it's called the Self Seeker channel. Um, I have uh, done photography, so I enjoy taking pictures of nature, people. And again, I ask people to come along with me for, for such events. Um, I love organizing road trips and retreats. I'm in the planning stages at the moment to hold an international retreat next year in India where we go and play music for the elephants in the sanctuary. So much, yes. <laughs> so I believe we are limitless. I believe we, we all have power to create what we want within us. It's just believing in yourself before you believe in anything or anyone else. First believe you, you can do it. It, it doesn't matter if you're supported or not, but I think if you have the right intention, the support will come. Yeah, I like that last part. That's super, that's super important. And, you know, holding that vision too, feeling it in your body and, you know, embodying it every day. And we are so aligned in, in what we want to create, you know, this community, this sense of connection and warmth. It, very much I'm on the same sheet as you. So I think that's why we've connected so quickly. But also, I saw you yesterday play a magical instrument. Can you please share with us a little bit about that? Definitely. So um, the instrument I was playing is called a quadzophone crystal harp, also called a crystal lyre. So it's made of 99.9%. .9%... Oh. 
You've muted yourself, my friend. So apologies for that. I keep receiving phone calls. So I'm just trying to mute them. Um, yeah, so it's a pure quartz crystal. And uh, these instruments are made by a company in Quebec, Canada. Mm -hmm. They have a family owned mine and uh, they create these amazing instruments and I get them over. I'm the authorized seller for them in Australia. Mm -hmm. and Apologies again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I I sell these instruments. I uh, in Australia. Um, they are tuned to the C major scale. So there are eight tubes of crystals, and you can carry it in your hand and wave it around. So you can either use it as a sound healing instrument to play for people. You know, to get get them into a relaxed state, or you can play it along with other instruments in an orchestra, in a band. Mm -hmm. And I've just uh, worked with a musician in India and both of us have come up, come up with a meditative dance track that I will be releasing soon. We actually made the music video for it yesterday at the mm -hmm. festival. So I'm it very excited so about good. it. so good. I loved it. So good. You can, and... you can hear... You, sorry, I was just going to say, you can listen to a bit of it on my YouTube channel if you like. Yeah, brilliant. We'll pop all the links wherever this podcast is posted. And also um, you'll see a picture of this instrument um, on Nick's website as well. I've actually never seen one before. It is so beautiful and had the pleasure of it being played right beside me yesterday and could feel it all in my upper chakras, like from the heart up was just felt really elevated and lifted um, was my personal experience with it. Yes. And so you've got, you had a few other instruments there. Do you like to dabble in a bit of sound healing? Yes. So I've been a student of sound healing for two and a half years now. I have a collection of about 38 to 40 instruments at last count. And I play all of them. Mm. Uh, doesn't mean I play them well necessarily, but I'm just learning to play and understand each instrument. I like to take my time to figure it out. And I'm not musically trained. And I think that's a good thing because then you don't know what to do. You actually have to spend time with the instrument to understand the different sounds it makes. Mm -hmm. So I even have different mallets to play the different instruments. Your mallet can change the sound you hear of the instrument. And the ones that are possible, I actually use just my fingers to play with. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And um, I, I've given public performances. I also um, do sound healings for people in private. And I've seen some magical shifts happen. In your opinion, uh, through intuitively exploring the instrument yourself as well as, as doing it for others, what do you feel is, how does the sound healing work for, for others? It, um, <clears throat> it's got to do with the vibrations. So they teach us that um, to, to help a person, you first got to bring out what causes the discomfort within the body. So I play sounds that are dissonant, that don't go together. That creates the discomfort and gives it an ejection button. So it is ejected out of your body by movement. So you'll do a twitch, you know, and that's gone. So I play the drum, I play the harp, I play crystal bowls with dissonant sounds. And... Um, I play them over your aura, over your body, so that it can't escape. Like, you know, the discomfort just has to get out. It can't hide anywhere in your body. Once that is done, then I play calming, peaceful sounds. So then you allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. You allow yourself to release what you've been holding back. And what doesn't belong in you or around you is then eliminated. You let it go it becomes easier to let go. Um, they work in magical ways, the, the musical instruments. And I've helped a, a child who's 16 and she's been uh, struggling with, with her siblings. But after we did the sound healing, she was really happy and she just felt more assertive and confident. She was like, the problem's not gone, but I just feel more able to handle it now. 
Oh, that's beautiful. It's like it um, creates spaciousness, which then allows for clarity. Very much so. Clarity mm -hmm. is a beautiful word that can be used here. Yes. You know, I even love to, if, if my mood's a little bit low or I'm just feeling a bit off, just crank the tunes in my house. And, you know, music in general uh, just makes you feel a bit better. Uh, so, and, and I know every single sound healing I've ever been to, sometimes they hit a note where you're like, ugh. <laughs> but then if you just surrender and go with it and just breathe into it, it, it like you said, I love the analogy you used about the eject button because that makes so much sense to me. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. And so what do you love about the sound for you personally? Um, I love the fact that everything I play touches me first. Oh, yes. Before it touches any, anyone else. So I feel everything that people are about to feel. So I think that that's how I look at myself as the first person to explore a new area. And then when I like it, I'll invite others to join. When I went to Kupi Dami, I'm like, I think people are going to love this. So I'm going to create an event here and get others to come and experience it. When I heard the sound of the crystal harp for the first time, I was like, this is pure magic. I need to get other people to listen to this. So I brought the instrument into my house to then help me touch other people around the world. I just took it with me on a trip to India and I played it for people there. They needed to hear it and experience it. So that's that's where I go with my sharing your magic work. with the world. I love it. <laughs> I love all that you do and that you're creating. And I know that you're kind of in a watch this space kind of phase because all of your vision, you're holding it. I saw you speak yesterday so passionately into it and it, I just felt it through my whole body. And it's like, I am looking forward to following your journey from here onwards because I know yesterday was such a big uh, thing for you. And how are you feeling post-event? Like, was that what you <laughs> had had seen and felt? Very much so. Um, the thing is, the magic about Kopi Darbin is every time there's a gathering there, you almost get the same feeling because it's people who feel the same way. They want to do the same thing for the community. They want to feed the most nutritious food for everyone who steps in. So that we all have the same intention. And uh, I've just seen it repeat over and over again. And when you come, you're going to feel like there's your family waiting for you, you know, go and hug them. And that's the feeling I got yesterday. I was like, I've started creating my own little family, my own little tribe. And I want to help and support everyone that was there achieve the biggest dreams they have. It doesn't matter how big that dream is, I would love to help you achieve it. That's my intention. So it's up to people now to connect with me and then take me up on the offer I'm presenting. Absolutely. And I know that anyone that wants to reach out to you can just go onto your website, which will drop down below and just, just send Nick a message and just share who it is that you are, what your vision is, what your passion is, because he loves to share that with people and that's something that I really admire about you is there's there's no scarcity, there's no competition. It's just this beautiful, like coming from this heart space where, you know, we all lead with love and there's enough space in this world for everyone and there's enough abundance to share around. And, and I thank you so much for what you're offering to this world. Thank you. I, I believe, I, I think I've actually struggled with abundance as a concept for a very long time. And I'm thinking, what is abundance and why is it so hard to obtain? Is it only materialistic goods? But I'll tell you what abundance is. Um, the fact that I'm able to check out this view mm. and the water, the sky, the trees, the nature, this is abundance for me, being able to do this at this moment, at this time. Trying to get back. Yeah. And what has led you to this place? I know that you haven't maybe always been doing exactly what you're doing now. Like, what was your journey to get to here? Oh, that's a, a interesting. That's an interesting story. Um, so, I've had to find alternate ways of healing. To put it in one sentence, because the medical system didn't really help me the way I expected it to. So the illusions I had around healing through the traditional systems, the newer traditional systems was shattered. And I was like, this is not working for me. So I have to find other ways of feeling better, whether it's on an emotional level, physical level, even spiritual level. I don't want to feel like 
crap, you know. But uh, because I have a few issues which I don't mind sharing, I've been diagnosed with avascular necrosis. So both my hips have been replaced and I'm still recovering from the last surgery I had a few months ago. Um, been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and it's, it's just been hard. I'm not finding help in the traditional pills that I've mm. been asked to take. So I'm thinking that there has to be something else that I can use to just you know, relieve me of this. So I got into hypnosis. So I, I do, I practice quantum healing hypnosis technique where I can help people access past lives, parallel lives, future lives, and so on. Uh, I got into breath work. I got into Reiki, got into sound healing. And every modality I come across, I just want to learn more and more. Like yeah. we learned about biomagnetism yesterday. So I've had a couple of sessions with uh, Lisa and they're magical. You can feel your body responding to the magnets. So I'm thinking people need to just know this, that this is available, this is out there. Mm. How do I do that? Create an event, invite them to be a speaker, let them give demonstrations. And then those who feel aligned or resonate towards what's being offered, they will they will take it up. Absolutely. And that's how we align because this is what my podcast is about, giving a voice to those amazing people out there in the community that have these modalities that someone has probably never heard of, like biomagnetism, what the heck. Um, you know, and, and and hearing their story and how they found that, just like you now sharing how you have found and to be here with us on this podcast today is is giving this a voice and bringing us together. So I love that you went on your journey and you are one of the curious souls that's still exploring and learning every single day, right? I believe my time is short and I want to connect with people as quickly and as intensely as possible. Um, when I say short, 100 years can also be short. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's not enough time. <laughs> Yeah, because we are all such magical people and we all have so much wisdom. So I think the best way is to just keep connecting, keep having gatherings and sharing circles where we support each other um, and uplift each other. Because when you uplift someone else, it's going to affect you. You're going to step into the next level of the frequency, the next vibration yourself too. Absolutely. And I want to just do that day in and day out, just help people and Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. And and I love how as well, you're helping people through doing your own explorations as well, you know, embodying your craft and, and exploring as you go along in order to share that with others. So thank you so much for your time today. And I always say to all of my guests, is there any other parting words of wisdom you would like to leave if someone was interested in, say, going on an exploratory journey of their own down this road or even coming to one of your events? Yeah. I think what I want to just say right now, just feeling the feeling what's what's happening in the collective consciousness is there is a lot of fear. There is a lot of fear around taking a new step, getting into something new, because people are thinking, well, what if I don't like it? What if I can't go back to my old ways? We are here to create something new. We are very powerful, every one of us. So the only thing we need to do is let go of the fear we have, which we've carried from another place, another time, which doesn't need to exist in the current reality. It's okay to let go. And then you believe in yourself that you can achieve anything. Go with that mindset and you, everyone can conquer the world. And you have multiple worlds that can be conquered. And with the help of community, Again, we can touch every heart out there that is lonely, that is afraid, that needs help, that was traumatized. We've all undergone trauma. We all carry trauma in our bodies in different parts. And we don't need to continue doing that. It's like excess baggage you're paying for when you don't need it. Yes. So you can let it go. And I want to create safe spaces within the community, not necessarily offered by myself, but I'm just creating the space and others will offer it for you. Yesterday we had 
uh, a beautiful girl offer herself as a safe space at the festival. And I'm so grateful. I didn't even think of it, but but she did. If anyone needs it, no one needed it, but it's good that it's there. So I want to offer a safe space for anyone and everyone to to find themselves. That's what I say on the back of my card. Let me help you find yourself. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for all that you're doing in the world, Nick, and for coming on the podcast. And I look forward, like I said, just before uh, watching your journey, watch this space, uh, such an inspirational man. Uh, and thank you for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure to be part of this new community that you got. Um, I'm very impressed with your work, Katie. Keep up the great work. And I hope we can connect again. Absolutely. And thank you, listeners. We will see you again soon.